Now, I have been a huge fan of Sanrio's popular series about a red panda struggling in Japan's workforce since it first aired way back in 2018. Kinda seems like a world away now, but this series is still feeling pretty fresh, and upon watching the fourth season, I felt like it had somehow come full circle. From its beginnings as a series about the Japanese population dealing with the constraints of overworking and crushing societal expectations, to a more outlandish and fun plot in seasons 2 and 3. To now. To quickly recap, season 1 has Retsuko as a 25 year old facing a job she hates and co workers she can't stand. By season 2, this problem equalizes a bit, and she takes up with a rich dude only to become successful as the lead singer of a rising J pop underground girl group in season 3. And though this is a very condensed retelling of those seasons, I think it gets the general idea across. In hindsight, while I enjoyed seasons 2 and 3 a lot, it's really those uh, more down-to-earth, struggling-with-life plotlines that hit home for me the most and prove that the show can dig a little bit deeper than many others in the same station. So season 4 was a return to form, except instead of just being introduced to Retsuko and the others for the first time, now you actually know them pretty well. It's not a huge season, hell. I was able to binge most of it in a couple of hours, but where things really take a turn is when you enter the narrative within. Retsuko's company has entered a new period of leadership. The old president of the company, this elephant dude with glasses, has what can be presumed as some sort of heart attack while running and after Haida rushes him to the hospital, he decides it's time to retire. Now, the president has built the company up over many decades, from a small-time operation to the large conglomerate it is in the present day, and he has a moral code of the company being a quote-unquote family to its people. In other words, no one gets cut off or left behind. Even if things are difficult, the workers can always trust that they will have a job through hard times and layoff periods. So what comes next shakes the company to its very core. There's a sort of savviness to the president's new replacement who was just elected in. He's much younger, he has good looks, radiates a cold of confidence and friendly but distant demeanor, and his name is Himuro. And systematically, he begins to take everything that made the company what it was, and with swift action cut that philosophy to pieces, effectively replacing it with his own way of thinking. Now this happens every day, to people from all over the world. You watching this video most likely have a story of either you or a family member going through this. Old management is replaced with new management. People who have dedicated their lives to the company are forced out, and former practices and conduct within the workspace are changed to fit the vision of the new individual put in charge. And anyone who doesn't fit within those new laws? Well, they begin to disappear from the company hierarchy. And this exact fate is what happens in the accounting department. Himuro decides too much of the company's budget is being put into maintaining the accounting part of the firm, so he enlists Director Tone, an older senior member of staff, to help him decide who to get rid of in order to decrease spending. Tone is a character we've come to know very well over the series. Once presented as this hard-hitting old-school tyrant, the show's developed him into more since then, and by season 4, he was quite likable. Though, to be honest, I actually always kind of liked him, even in season 1, he was, he was genuinely hilarious. But Tone doesn't want any of his staff departing. They all play a significant role in the company, and eventually he outright refuses to fire anyone, saying it to Himuro's face, instead choosing to defend his workers. Himuro doesn't like this, and as such, along with complaints by a very drunk Retsuko and Fenico one night, the new president demotes Tone to a disposable blank position with a bogus name, forcing him to retire with a family to feed and his life pretty much in the toilet financially at this point. Now, this all makes Himuro look like a villain, and it's possible from his point of view that maybe he wanted the best for the company, and his way of doing it was cutting costs, and that means laying people off and forcing the older generation to retire, and bring in a younger generation to step in with new technology. He states this several times, that he wants to help the company, revitalize it and put it back on the map, but slowly, we see that he isn't exactly as genuine as he presents himself. 
Taking advantage of Haida's interest for coding and naive trust, Himuro promotes him and begins roping him into a scheme of window dressing, and only with Tone in the accounting department's help are they eventually able to stop the falsified documentation before its official submission, thus saving the company face. And while the heist-like finale was a bit tonally strange considering the realism that the rest of the season delved into with corporate corruption, it was still a super fun way to end the season, and I'm glad things concluded the way they did. More on that in a minute. I loved this season because it really stretched the viewer's ability to trust even the core characters, and the office plot was a nice tie-in to what made season 1 so great. But not everything was absolutely perfect. I've gotta admit, Retsuko's hair-pulling broken romance attempt with Haida over and over and over again episode after episode was a frustrating watch, but it did make one thing very clear. These two need to stop needlessly keeping secrets from each other. Like seriously, so much of the supposed misunderstandings could have been completely avoided if they had just said what everyone was thinking. I think it's kind of accurate given the Japanese population are largely meant to fit in and taught that standing out and expressing opinions is bad or inappropriate, but man, it was a tough watch this season because of it. If they ever have a chance at being together, they're going to have to trust each other or just move on. Personally, I thought that Inui was perfect for Haida, but that was unfortunately squashed in Season 3, and probably won't see the light of day again. Also, y'all need to stop drinking so much, especially Retsuko. Your livers are gonna look like frickin' dehydrated grapes by the time you're 30. Just have some self-control, that's all I'm saying. But anyway, I like the ending as I mentioned earlier, though it's unlikely given how common new cold corporate leaders get put in that most people who are forced to resign would get their jobs back just like that. It does happen on occasion, but this return to normality can be extremely rare in a cold world which is increasingly obsessed with money and power and less focused on morality and professionalism. So while Tone and Kabai getting rehired and the old president coming back to rehead the company is freaking awesome, sadly in many cases this isn't true to the world of the working. And sometimes it's good when a new leader comes in and listens to people and wants to treat them like a family, but middle and higher management is often a messy game and good leaders can be really hard to come by. In any case, Haida decides he needs a change, so the one main difference between the way Season 4 starts and the way Season 4 ends is now Haida is on his own, out of the company, and pursuing a job with whatever he wants to do. He's got a bit more confidence now, and though he was frankly a pain in the ass for most of the season who unfairly shat on quite a few people, it seems as though his head's finally on straight again, and he can go back to pursuing Retsuko. Or not, he could just date Inui, I'd be fine with that too. I mean, red pandas are cool and all, but did I mention she's gray? So anyway, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Where could things go from here? How do you feel about the season? But as always, everyone, thanks so much for your support, and I'll see you in the next video.